Alright, shit weather today. Time to do some work on some uh, inside little jobs like time clocks, etc. Got this uh, old AEG time clock XPGM. Quite a low number. Um, plugged it in, it doesn't seem to work, so. I'll have a look, see if we can work out what the problem is on this device, and see if we can get it to work. Yeah, let's whip the cover off this device and have a look in here. And see why well, it's not responding. There we go. Get the cover off. I oh, just see straight away there's a pillar missing here on the nameplate. Hmm, interesting. Do a continuity check on the motor. So this clock, AG time clock, they've got an uh, AC synchronous motor here at the bottom. And um, <clears throat> I'm just going to check the continuity. Let's see what we're going to get here. 8.027 kiloamps. I'm just going to check how much current the motor is doing. It's a blocked condition. Oh, that's not a good sign. Not doing any current. Interesting. Should be doing some current. Oh, hang on. I mean, I need to be an AC. That is 13.3, 13.4 milliampere. I'm going to energize it again and see if we can get the thing to spin. Still stall, so I give the drive wheel a bit of a push. It's toying. Needs to go the other way, but it's alright. I'll just push it this way. I think it's just to add on. There we go, it's freed up. And I'm probably going to put some lubricant on there and clean it up a bit better. Yeah, it's running very nicely, very smooth now. Here we've got the so controlled echappement, trend echappement. So this uh, jackknife setup is uh, trying to keep the shipment in trend with the main frequency. Escapement is not running yet. We'll fix that shortly. I'll take the end plate off and uh, see if we can get this. Uh, The spring has it needs to load up first too as well, so we're gonna get a different angle on this and put a bit of lubrication on the device. Freeing itself up slowly, so uh, but, uh, you can't beat natural daylight. So, again, I got the Escheppement outside now because it's a good day today. So, this is uh, the crankshaft is driven by the synchronous motor, which winds up through the gear train, winds up the main spring, which is a so called Rutsch fader. And I'll show that a bit later. Escapement, and we got all the gears here on the count down train it looks like a half second beat one two three. yeah looks like it just enjoyable to watch how this uh, actual mechanism works you can see part of the drive train First, second, third gear, which is uh, running up the main spring.
just check some uh, shots from different angles so you can see the mechanism. And here we have the main uh, spring bell, so the top gear is driven through the motor, through the reduction gear train. The bottom part of the bell is uh, with the gears is driving the actual clockwork mechanism. So if there's a power cut, the clock keeps going. So uh, if I de-energize the clock, if I can do it uh, here, then you will see the escapement stop. The clock will going, and these clocks will maintain a uh, power reserve for 24 hours. So that's the whole idea of these uh, controlled escapements. So this control got a double set of contacts. These are the lower two contacts and I'll operate the mechanism. Turn the clock a little bit so you can see it a bit better. Uh, I may need to relocate my camera a little bit here. One contact closed. Open, open the other one, closed, o open one, open two, closed, open one, open two, closed. And then the top contact, the top contact is just an open and close. Oh, that's the one with lever, is this one. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Then we have a ratchet star wheel here which will operate a few times. Brass star wheel which controls the contacts. Same applies for the one at the bottom. Let's relocate the camera a little bit. That's, that star wheel lives here. Uh, this dial is an astronomical clock, so to uh, you have these riders, they're sitting on here, they're controlled by a, a gear mechanism in the dial itself. So the spins here, they control the top contact, and the spins that are underneath, um, yeah, they you control the lower contacts. These type of clocks were used in the old powerboard days uh, for tariff control and street lights. I've got a polyphase one as well, and I'll show you how that works, and I'll, as well as a close-up on the metering. Uh, now the motor itself, I think, yeah. This came out of another clock. And they've got a three-phase contact in here. Let's see if we can demonstrate it. Get the camera a bit better on here. Close, open, close, open, close, open. So this is just an, uh, yeah, it's three phase contact. And the actuators are just fiber gear wheels here. This mechanism, they have day charts on them actually. This clock was uh, 6512, so December 1965. The other clock was 1962. Oh yeah, the latch mechanism here. I'll see if we can get it in, in, in zoom. Let's Making videos, your best asset is natural daylight. You can't beat it. Energize device. Looks like this one is stalled as well. See if we can give it a little hint. There we go, it's turning. Also, dried up uh, grease. This one needs cleaning up. Hope oh, the camera picks it up nicely. Nice smooth running. Oh, it stopped again. It needs a little bit of maintenance here. A bit of protest from the other side. Let's have a look on the other side.
yeah this clock has problems and I think I had a look at the mechanism there's too much end play on some of the gears that's why it has got stalled let's have a look at it and investigate as you can see the first is the black wheel driving the second wheel it's happy the third wheel is slipping and if you look at the shaft it's under a big angle so it's not happy and I can see why it's missing the drive here there's too much end play if you look at the bush here see the movement here so this needs to be rebushed so it needs to be drilled out and a new bushing inserted um, this is a spare mechanism that got out of a stripped clock so I'm not going to do it but I'll keep this one for spare parts anyway so yeah that's what happens an unhappy clock okay we're going to do a quick current measurement on this device here and uh, plug in 14 milliampere, 14.2 this is clock is sold again I'll let it go see the difference between running and starting current happily make bug all difference so a synchronous motor normally shouldn't really overheat well it's running or not so it's running now and it's about 14.2 milliampere that's on this clock and I'll test the other clock as well just to have a bit of an idea yeah, the other clock is doing 13 milliampere got it connected up here in series with the motor so really if the clock is blocked or winning the current doesn't change much more or less so here we got the nameplate of the the AAG LTG 10 slash 1 slash 1 G MOD star 220 volt 220 volts 50 hertz XPGM Provinciale Gelderse Elektriciteitsmaatschappij Arnhem one thing I just forgot to mention but I'll leave you this as the astronomical dial with a little star wheel that hits the pin here click so that flicked over and that drives the internal part in the dial which makes the sliders move because in this little window is the aperture which shows the time of the year I'll be spinning it so you see the days or the months uh, move past same time these sliders adjust themselves so if a clock like this is purchased by a utility uh, it's important to know the uh, how do you call it? latitude where the clock is gonna be installed like in the Netherlands it's 50 deg 52 degrees northern hemisphere so there's a different uh, eccentric disc which is built within here compared with a clock which is working like in New Zealand which is 37 degrees southern so uh, the end and the finishing of the days is uh, different in certain parts of the world not sure it makes sense what I said here but uh, 